Good evening. I'd like to call to order the 15th regular meeting of the 2018-2019 Common Council. Would the clerk please read the quote for the evening? Learn from the past, prepare for the future, live in the present. Thank you very much. Next, would the clerk please call the roll? There are eight present. Uh, Alderperson Wolf and Savaglio are excused. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last uh, council meeting. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, very much. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to a presentation of the Adopt a Park program by Don, so Don Sokolowski and Nancy Maring. Don is the Department of Public Works Management Analyst, and Nancy is a Community and Economic Development Planner. Just leave it there. After multiple neighborhood associations and groups in the city became interested in ways the public could play a more active role in stewardship with local parks and trails, public works staff developed a pilot program for the Adopt a Park and Trails based on thorough research from other communities throughout the country. The Adopt a Park mission is to provide volunteer opportunities for individuals and groups to take an active role that contributes to the beautification of local parks and trails. The city of Sheboygan recognizes the opportunity of, of the programs present to aid in maintaining and monitoring public spaces, but also sees the potential um, for public participation and input on what happens and what is planned for our parks and trails. Our goal is to work collaboratively with these organizations to increase awareness in our parks, encourage and recognize volunteer contributions and efforts, develop an organization advocacy for parks and trails, and build community pride in parks. Paper Box and Specialty Company adopted the section of the Shoreland 400 Trail. Their special event, their cleanup event, was, was held on October 6, 2018, and we'd like to show you a short video of how the event went.
Our second event was the Indiana Corridor Neighborhood Association who adopted Moose Park. Their neighborhood hot dog roast was held on September 8, 2018, and we'd like to show you how that went as well. As these organizations move forward with the Adopt a Park and Trail programs, the city will learn and adapt programs to best serve the community and begin to accept applications from other groups. The Department of Public Works worked collaboratively through interdepartmental cooperation with the Planning Department as well as the Police Department. Special thanks to Nancy, Jeff, and Alder Decker for making these events successful. We are very excited to announce the King Park Neighborhood Association has recently adopted King Park, neighbor, King Park and interest has been shown in adopting the Evergreen Trails. In conclusion, processes in place for continual dialogue between the Adopt a Park and Trail participants and the Department of Public Works will continue as we move forward on this very exciting endeavor. I would like to thank these two individuals for all their work in, in organizing this program. And we have a few people we'd like to call up now to give some special recognition to. First of all, the Indiana Avenue Corridor. Do we have anyone here from the Indiana Avenue? Dean, Decker. Dean you want to come up? <laughs> <laughs> Dean, thanks uh, for the role you're playing there. As the leader of that group, we want to uh, give you the certificate of appreciation to the Indiana Anna Avenue uh, Neighborhood Association for the adopting uh, Moose Park. Uh, their kickoff event was September 8th of 2018. Congratulations. Thank you. Anything? I would just like to thank uh, Nancy and Dawn for their leadership in this. Uh, they've really you know, got, helped with all this. They've, they've uh, really done a fantastic job doing, getting this started, and I hope it continues through more of the parks. Thank you very much. And next, I'd like to call up the representatives of Sheboygan Paper Box, uh, Joe and Dave Vanderpie. Uh, we want to give them a certificate of appreciation uh, for their adoption of the uh, Shoreland, a portion of the Shoreland 400 Trail, and their uh, kickoff event was September 6th of 2018. 
Congratulations. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. And would one of you like to say a couple of words? Sure. Well, don't I'll worry about that. Uh, thanks again to Don and Nancy for everything they did getting this going. Um, we got a lot of avid cyclists at the plant, myself included, so we're excited to see the bike trail get cleaned up. You know, I was real thrilled when that went in and being part of that with that running right in front of our factory like that. Also really excited to see something happen with the Evergreen Park trails. Um, we've got a great gem here in the city of Sheboygan with Evergreen Park and it could definitely use some some love at the moment and we're hoping some people step forward and I personally am excited to be part of that and hopefully Don and Nancy will play a big role in that as well so thanks guys thank you very much appreciate it and then I'd also like to call up the representatives of the King Park Neighborhood Association I'd like to present this to Brian Mahorek. It's a certificate of appreciation from the city of Sheboygan to the King Park Neighborhood Association for adopting King Park. And we have that down as today's date of November 5th of 2018, even though I know you've done many cleanup projects at the park. Congratulations, thank and thank you very much. Would like to say a word? Uh, once again, I'd just like to also thank uh, Nancy and Dawn for helping us get involved in this, and I do hope some other parks do get involved in it because it's a good cause, and it does help get the parks to get clean and more people to get involved with it. Very good. Thank you very much. And we just want to remind people that uh, if they would like to see a group that they have or a company, uh, please call the Department of Public Works and ask for Don Sokolowski, and we'll be happy to connect you with the details you need to adopt a park or a trail. I, I, unfortunately, I don't have any music to accompany me, so if someone wants to hum, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> and again, I recognize, uh, I don't know if everyone has a, a printed copy of, great, so you can follow along. I've also added uh, to tonight's uh, discussion uh, the actual lines to help guide you as, as I go through. Uh, as you recall, uh, January 2017, the Common Council approved its uh, first strate strategic plan, a five-year plan. Uh, we have six focus areas, quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and lastly, uh, communication. Uh, some projects, um, as, as, we'll know, as I'll note going through uh, tonight, uh, they probably will not be uh, accomplished in calendar year 2018, and, and as a result, uh, please note uh, some of the deadlines have been moved to a 2019 timeline. Um, staff does work collaboratively with internal and external partners for the support and improve relations ships. Uh, staff does leverage all intergovernmental resources and other contributions. Uh, we look forward to public feedback. And uh, we have comparable benchmarking uh, with other municipalities to ensure that our efforts are fiscally responsible. Uh, some of you that may have attended uh, this past uh, Finance and Personnel Committee saw, in fact, a new software that we're utilizing uh, that does have uh, the ability to compare, especially on a fiscal nature, uh, other communities in the state of Wisconsin. So the first uh, focus area is quality of life. Uh, I know that the fire chief will be uh, giving a, a very detailed third quarter report uh, at next week's uh, public um, licensing hearings and public safety. Um, fire response uh, is six minutes and 33 minutes or 380 seconds. Uh, our standard or our target is uh, 90. I think that's a national target is 90% of the time being able to respond within that 380 seconds. Um, through the third quarter year to date, uh, we're at 76%. And I know that the chief will talk a little bit about uh, some changes in protocol uh, for county dispatching and how that's affect, affected the response times, as at least the recording of it. 
Our ISO rating uh, is currently two. Uh, the chief uh, worked with the ISO uh, rating uh, agency and uh, we did receive the results of that study and we were reaffirmed at uh, a level two, which is extremely high. Uh, our goal, of course, was to end up with a rating of one. I think there's only three communities in the state that have a rating of one. Uh, my recollection is the state identified the only way to get to a, an ISO rating of one is additional staff, uh, which will be part of uh, a discussion uh, soon as once we receive the Fitch uh, study relating to the fire department. Part one, crime rate, uh, specifically crime, uh, property crimes. Uh, uh, the lower the percent uh, is the better. Uh, so, uh, our target through three quarters of the year, of course, is to be at 75, uh, no less, no more than 75% of our benchmark. Uh, we're only at 57%. Uh, so year to date for the raw numbers is 2.27 per thousand. Uh, and the benchmark uh, for the full year is 2.7. So uh, as I mentioned, we are below what the benchmark is for the year. For neighborhood association meetings, uh, 72 uh, to date, and the, the full annual goal for 2018 is 70. So we've surpassed uh, the number of meetings as far as goals for 2018. Walkability score, uh, we score, we score Primarily, we use the downtown as the primary identifier. We're at 86%. Uh, the scoring is from 1 to 100. Um, the sort of ranking or, or categories, if you're between 70 and 89 on the score, you're very walkable. If you're above 90, 90 to 100, it's a, they refer to it as a walker's paradise. So we are very close to that very top category. Percent of graffiti removed within three days, 100%. Uh, high visibility, education enforcement, traffic deployments. Um, normally, uh, we're around nine per year. Already 14 have been deployed. And again, as alders, if you have concern regarding uh, speeding in your area and feel that uh, the neighborhood could benefit from having a trailer parked out on the street, uh, you know, please contact the police department. Next is infrastructure and public facilities. Um, Five-year uh, five information technology plan uh, has, has been presented and authorized. Uh, additional uh, vehicles for our transit system, uh, they've been ordered. Uh, refurbishing a South 8th Street bridge, again, that's completed during this calendar year. Uh, le over 1,100 linear feet of sanitary sewer relining, uh, that's 100% complete. And payment rating, 6.25, uh, 96% uh, of the uh, goal that we've established of 6.5. Uh, please note that this rating is reviewed every two years. Uh, so we're due for a new comprehensive review in 2019. So this, the 6.25 is the same as the outcome of the 2017 comprehensive rating uh, analysis. Uh, and 2015 was the prior uh, scoring and that was 5.93, so we're moving in the right direction. Economic development. Uh, managing construction of South Point Enterprise Campus. Uh, over the past two or three weeks, uh, the streets are being installed, uh, so we're excited that that is, in essence, kind of the finishing larger uh, project associated with this uh, new business park. Uh, please note that signage and landscaping will occur next spring. Uh, next is 314,000 and change for room tax generated, 57%. Uh, uh, this is just the first and second quarter. So even though we're normally talking about three quarters, because of the delay in reporting uh, by the local hotels, uh, we only have available the first and second quarter. Also note that the third quarter is typically the highest of all the quarters. So again, very good sign that through slower quarters, uh, we're already at 57%. Number of jobs created, again, Old World Creamery is the main source of that. Um, increment value of property within the TIDs, uh, we're at 129% over what the benchmark goal was. That goal was roughly 120 million, uh, so we're roughly 34 million above that for 1-1-2018 valuation. Um, 
Last uh, item I wanted to mention is our annual trolley ridership, uh, 4, almost 4,400 uh, in 2018. Uh, the goal or benchmark was 2,300, so we're almost double what that goal was. In 2008, 2017, it was 3,300 trips or riderships. Neighborhood revitalization. Uh, three new associations. Uh, our goal for 2018 was two, so we've exceeded that. Uh, code enforcement orders issued. Uh, again, this is through the first three quarters. Uh, we are at 64%. Uh, the annual goal is 1,000. Uh, in 2017, for the full year, it was a little over 1,200. So I don't know if it's good news or bad news. We will probably meet or exceed uh, level of activity in 2017. Also sort of good news, bad news, abandoned vehicles being towed, uh, 136 to date. Uh, the annual goal or benchmark is 86, so we're at 164 just through the first three quarters. The total amount of vehicles towed in 17 uh, was 83. So again, we've uh, exceeded all of 17 just through the first uh, nine months this year. Garbage complaints, investigated and cited, 423. The benchmark is 300. Uh, the full amount, the full number for 2017 was 820. Governing and fiscal management. Uh, as you're aware, uh, staff has submitted budget documents to GFOA for consideration. We were awarded that earlier uh, this su summer. Uh, we are waiting uh, for the financial audit uh, as well as the uh, popular annual financial report uh, we expect to hear uh, in the next uh, during, the, during this month. For unassigned fund balance, coming into the, uh, ending the year, <coughs> excuse me, beginning the year, uh, we were at roughly 57%. Our goal, if you recall, is to be at 30, uh, no less than 30%. So we substantially exceed our unassigned fund balance. <coughs> excuse me. Munis modules, uh, we are at 24, which is what our benchmark is for 2018. <coughs> if you attended uh, tonight's Finance and Personnel Committee, you heard that um, the city retained its AA2 uh, rating through Moody's. In fact, the Moody's uh, <coughs> relies upon audited information. So even though the city had debt issued in June, uh, the issuance tonight, uh, they simply reaffirmed that debt rating, no new analysis occurred. <coughs> the last category is uh, communication. Uh, we have monthly community newsletters. All eight were issued January through September. Uh, uh, community survey, uh, it was completed February, March for 2018. In light of the ARP uh, grant, uh, we are already in the process of uh, creating our 2008 or 2019 community survey and again that uh, we will receive input through uh, most of November. All city social media outlets, we are over 100% of our benchmark or goal. Uh, we use Facebook, Twitter, Nextdoor, Nexel, and Instagram. Uh, 25 council slash community the whole meetings have been televised again through the first three quarters and last is four appearances on the Hmong radio station, and I know Wendy uh, appeared uh, this past month. So uh, six is our goal for, six is identified as a benchmark for 2018. Uh, with that, if you have any questions of myself or the management team members, uh, feel free uh, to ask them uh, at your committee level. Uh, any questions for me tonight? Daryl, thank you very much you. for that presentation and update. Uh, next, we'll go on to public forum. There is no one tonight, this evening. Okay, and then next is mayor's announcements. I'd like to call up representatives of H.C. Denison. Tonight, we have a proclamation to present. Whereas the H.C. Denison Company was founded in 1928 by Homer C. Denison in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 
throughout its history, the H.C. Denison has served generations of Sheboygan families and continued to grow on the strong foundation that Homer built. Whereas the H.C. Denison Company is still in its infancy when the stock market crashed, it weathered the unprecedented challenges of the Great Depression. Homer's philosophy centered around an in-depth evaluation of high-quality investments specifically tailored for each client's financial needs. This philosophy allowed the H.C. Denison Company to prosper during an exceptionally difficult time. Whereas the H.C. Denison grew and leadership changed, its core philosophy became the cornerstone of its continued success. Conrad C. Testweed joined the firm in, in 1964 and nine years later assumed the position of president and became the controlling stockholder. And whereas in April of 1987, H.C. Denison grew through the purchase of the Gottsacker Investment Company, and a year later the firm acquired First Securities Company of Manitowoc. In March of 1990, the H.C. Denison Company relocated uh, its headquarters to its current location on 618 North 7th Street after 57 years in the U.S. Bank building. And whereas the H.C. Denison Company continues to grow today as the oldest independently owned investment firm based in Wisconsin, Homer C. Denison's honesty, integrity, and intellect, and the strong foundation uh, from which H.C. Denison continues to serve its clients for 90 years. I now, therefore, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do wish to congratulate the H.C. Denison Company on their occasion of their 90th anniversary. Congratulations, gentlemen. Conrad Testweed and Jim Testweed are here. And Conrad, would you like to say a few words? Well, first off, I'd like to thank you for the very nice uh, proclamation. And I'd like to thank uh, Mayor Mike and the council for all of the good, aggressive things you've done to make Sheboygan, this area, such an enjoyable social place as well as an economically sound county area that encourages business development and good economic stability. I, I really thank you for what you're doing here in that regard. I had just one other little thought, and that is that we are continuing Homer's philosophy of 90 years ago of trying to get people to invest in companies that are soundly managed, that are financially strong, and importantly, that they have a product or service that we think is going to continue to be in demand for years to come. Sort of a little philosophy that we've had. We have been offered, uh, several times people tried to, to buy our company and thought it would be a good addition to theirs, but they were all big firms where our people couldn't talk to the president, or they often were working with the companies to get them to sell the stock to the public, and they would assume they would offer them more money than other competitors, but what we're interested in is the customer, not which company is going to get more for their stock, really which customer is going to get the best bargain. I don't want to go into more than that, but I certainly want to say thank you for James for following me in the footsteps and announce that his daughter has just joined our firm within the last year, which makes it the third test read generation. Hopefully, they will continue with this philosophy. And thank you, Mayor. You're very welcome. Thank you, yes. Uh, we ask that residents consider uh, taking the SHAPE uh, Sheboygan Community Survey. This input will, uh, will guide our strategic plan update. A link is located on the city website and the survey will be open until uh, November 30th. Our Sheboygan Police Department is conducting No Shave November. It's an effort to create an awareness about the mentors that are needed at Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, to fill the waiting list needs, and they also helps to raise funds to support Big Brothers and Big Sisters. Last year, they raised $4,100. So I see that our chief is already participating. Congratulations. 
Uh, tomorrow is election day, so please get out and vote. Uh, the city clerk's office saw a record turnout of early voters at 3,106, correct? And uh, I want to thank the, the city clerk's office and all their election uh, uh, volunteers that will be taking care of the polls tomorrow. We really appreciate all the effort and everything you've done in planning, and hopefully everything will be successful tomorrow. Um, the second annual Holiday Lights Run Walk will be held on November 17th. This is to support the Sheboygan Food Bank. And registrations will be accepted through Monday, next Monday, the 12th of November. Uh, we have some new snow emergency rules that the council approved earlier this year. And uh, beginning November 1st, uh, those rules are in place now if we do get a large snowfall and call a snow emergency. Uh, and that prohibits uh, the parking of vehicles on designated snow emergency routes, boulevards, cul-de-sacs, and dead-end streets. Those are uh, signified with uh, signs along the way. The snow emergency routes um, uh, on the vehicles parked illegally on those snow emergency routes during a snow emergency will be ticketed and towed. Now, we haven't had a snow emergency that was called in, in the last decade, so people are not used to this. So please do everything you can to get the word out to these people because they're going to think that they're just going to get a ticket and their car is going to be towed to an impound lot if they don't follow these rules. Uh, parking on the snow emergency routes uh, of the city will be permitted on the even sides of the street and north and west sides when the snow emergency is declared and on the even numbered sides between the hours of 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. The simple rule when a snow emergency is called still follow, park for tomorrow. The vehicles illegally parked again will be ticketed and towed. Uh, and on your desk tonight, you'll find a letter, a memo from me in the support of the uh, proposed uh, 2019 budget. And I hope you'll consider uh, those points uh, when you vote on the budget tonight. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. That will include items 2.2 through 2.12. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of those items? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Alderperson Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Born? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.10 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, Item 4.1 is resolution number 113 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing the removal of paragraph 5 sub F of the Harbor Center Marina Management Agreement dated October 12th of 2018. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve and suspend and pass the resolution. Second. First of all, the, there, there's a, a call for suspension. Is there any objection to suspension on this? Seeing none, then please make the motion again. Uh, no, I move that we pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that uh, motion and support. Is there any discussion on the uh, re my motion that's on the floor? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Truster? <coughs> Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Uh, Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is resolution number 114 of 1819 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute an agreement for transit service between the city of Sheboygan and the village of Kohler. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As an initial matter, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Thank you. Is there any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed. Uh, therefore, I move to pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any uh, discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? 
Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Items 4.3 through 4.11 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 168 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 108 of 1819 by Alderperson Bourne and Rinfleisch, uh, authorizing the contract extension by and between Grota Appraisals LLC Assessor and the City of Sheboygan, and, uh, and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Reinfleisch. And move a second and adopt and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 169 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 109 of 1819 by Alderperson Reinfleisch, awarding the sale of $3,800,000 in taxable general obligation refunding bonds and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Reinfleisch. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is RC number 170 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Dumas referred resolution number 110 of 1819 by Alderperson Reinfleisch, awarding the sale of $5,100,000 in general obligation refunding bonds and recommends approving the resolution. Alderperson Reinfleisch. I move to pass it up and the resolution as amended, noting Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any further discussion on the motion? Seeing now, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Uh, item 5.4 is RC number 171 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 112 of 1819 by all the persons Reinfleisch and Born authorizing entering into a development agreement with Badger State Lofts Limited Partnership. All the person Reinfleisch. I move that we authorize entering into a development agreement with Badger State Lofts. <coughs> Second. Thank you for that motion and support. That motion is before you. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is RC number 172 of 1819 by licensing hearings and public safety committee to whom was referred general ordinance number 21 of 1819 by Alderpersons Donahue and Reinfleisch repealing and recreating article 8 of chapter 70 of municipal code entitled sexual offender residency restrictions and recommends approving the ordinance. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Boren? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I read this uh, over very carefully and I'm going to support it. Uh, I have the utmost confidence that the uh, police department is going to take, take on this role, uh, the chief or his des uh, designated person. Uh, there's also something in there that if the person does not agree with the decision, they can still come back to the committee for an appeal. But I feel actually it's probably going to be an upgrade for the city. Thanks. Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. And just uh, uh, building on what uh, Alder Boren uh, had mentioned or had discussed, uh, the key piece of this is to understand that the sexual offender residency restrictions with the modifications as outlined in the ordinance, which unfortunately we don't have right in front of us tonight, um, maintain the uh, oversight of the city with respect to <coughs> approval of residency for sex offenders. It does amend the uh, distance requirements from 1,500 to 1,000 feet so that uh, we bring this ordinance more into uh, constitutional uh, compliance. Um, the, the, the excellent part about this particular resolution is that the um, job of reviewing uh, placement of sexual, not reviewing, but approving uh, the placement of certain sexual offenders uh, will now be with uh, the trained uh, officers of the police department. This will bring a level of professionalism, I think skill and accuracy that is not necessarily missing from our committee work, but again, uh, ensures that in this constitutionally interesting provision that uh, justice is done. One of the key learnings for me in this whole process, and it took me just a <laughs> kind of a long time to figure it out, is that we have very skilled probation agents who work with many of our sexual offenders who are in the process of, and as part of their job, find adequate and safe placements for sex, sex offenders who are still on paper. Um, so the partnership between the probation and parole office and the police department, I think, will highly professionalize this, will secure our process from constitutional uh, challenge. And uh, as we have done since the time I've been on the council, we'll really... Um, streamline the, pr the procedures and the processes that we use uh, so that we're more in line with how a modern council would work. So um, I would, uh, I, I am strongly in favor of this. I think I can speak for Chief Domogoski, who is, is uh, also in, in favor of the way that we have done this, um, although he may have some other ideas, but um, I think it is a, I think it is a, wise and adequate thing that we are doing. Thank you for those comments. Alder person Ryan Fleisch. <clears throat> I voted against this on the committee level uh, following the lead of the chief who would prefer not to have <clears throat> would prefer that we eliminate this residency <clears throat> ordinance altogether. Um, people would still be able to know this but uh, we're putting an extra we're not really eliminating any work that's moving into the I will support it tonight. Um, the basis of compromise is a good step forward, better than what our current practices is. It's a good step. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Trester? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Uh, under general ordinances, item 6.1 and 6.2 will be referred to various committees. Under item 7, matters laid over. Item 7.1 is RO number 123 of 1819 by the city administrator as part of the budget process, the attached listing of estimated uh, unreserved fund balances at December 31st of 2019 and outstanding debt as, uh, as of December 31st of 2018. Alder Person Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, rather, uh, clerk call the roll. Truster? Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflish? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. 
Item 7.2 is RC number 159 of 1819 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom was referred RC number 139 of 1819 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, and Resolution number 94 of 1819 by Alderpersons Reinflesch, a born establishing the 2019 budget appropriations and the 2018 tax levy for use during the calendar year and recommends approving the resolution with the amendment to the cable TV fund. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I move that we accept and adopt and pass the resolution with the amendments. Second. Sec Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Donahue. Um, uh, Mayor, I would like to move to amend uh, this resolution uh, with the following amendments, and these reflect, as I understand it, uh, information that we have received from the state, which requires small adjustment to some of the categories, specifically the amendment uh, with respect to general revenue and intergovernmental revenue connecting highway aids would be decreased by $151 to $281,470. The second amendment would, um, again, amend that general revenue intergovernmental revenue category uh, to increase general transportation aids by $85,323 to $1,612,103. And finally, to amend general fund expenditures unclassified, the reserve for contingency would increase by $350,000 to $500,000. Second. We have a second to that amendment. Um, any discussion, first of all, on the amendment? Seeing none, um, all those in favor of the amendment as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes. So now we're voting back on the main motion as amended. Is there any further discussion on the main motion as amended? Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd just like to reiterate my comments that I made at the committee the whole meeting uh, not too long ago. Um, and I'm sort of just speaking on the general budget uh, <coughs> resolutions that will be coming before us as well. Um, again, just wanted to extend my thanks uh, for the, the city staff, the city administrator, the finance office, um, all the department heads for all their work that, that they've done. Um, I think that this is a, a great example of our city moving forward, um, working with a lot of constraints, external constraints that we have to do to run and operate a city. Um, I think that we have a fantastic city here, right here on the lake. We have a lot of great departments um, and services that we offer from the library to the police and fire department to the public works and everyone else in between. So I just want to say thanks to everybody, but that's put the hard work into that. Thank you very much for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflesh? <coughs> Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Item 7.3 is RC number 161 of 1819 by the Committee of the Whole. To whom was referred RC number 141 of 1819 by the Public Works Committee. And a copy of resolution number 94 of 1819 by all the persons Ryan Fleisch and Born establishing the 2019 budget appropriations and the 2018 tax levy for use during the calendar year and recommends to accept and file the documents. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to support. I'm going to support this tonight, but also want to uh, express uh, some concerns on the basis of the taxpayer, and also redouble our efforts to make sure that we remain uh, fiscally res fiscally <clears throat> responsible in providing services. Uh, there was an article that was in the Sheboygan <clears throat> Press. I believe it was on Friday. I forwarded a copy to uh, the mayor and Mr. Hoffland and uh, a couple of the alders. And the gist of the article was by the United Way, uh, and it showed that 13% of the people in the city of Sheboygan are living in poverty. Uh, the uh, United Way uh, has a, uh, a program called ALICE, or a designation called ALICE, A-L-I-C-E, which means that families are asset limited Income, income <coughs> constrained, but employed. And that was 33% uh, of the citizens living in Sheboygan. 
are living above poverty but are still, uh, still can't afford basic needs such as child care, food, transportation, and health care. So that's 46% of our citizens uh, uh, fall into that category and 54% of our citizens are above that and, uh, and of good means. Uh, uh, Countywide, 28% uh, uh, fall under the Al Alice category statewide, which is above the statewide uh, of 25.8% of the, uh, the citizens. It said in the article that the bare minimum for a single person living in Sheboygan uh, to be able to provide a roof over their head and, and other necessities is an income of $18,600. A family of four is uh, to provide housing in those bare minimums in the city of Sheboygan requires an income of $63,000. $24, uh, and I believe the per capita income in Sheboygan right now is about 43000 So I, I just want to stress upon uh, our leadership uh, to be continued to strive to be as fiscally responsible as possible because of the situation of the taxpayers. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't think that a half percent uh, rise in the sales tax or a fee or a wheel tax uh, Many of these people that we're talking about here that are living in poverty maybe do not own homes, but they, they rent from a landlord, and if these costs continue to go up for the landlords, of course, this is passed on to the citizens. So uh, again, I'm going to support the budget. I think the staff did an excellent job, but again, I think we have to watch very closely that we uh, try to be as frugal in providing these services as possible uh, to benefit the taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Alderperson Donahue. I just wanted to thank Alder Bourne for his, for his comments and for bringing into sharp relief the uh, difficult economic circumstances that many in our city face in spite of good times uh, as, as, as we see uh, you know, in general. Um, and part of the issue is, and there's certainly nothing this council can address, is that so much of the maintenance of our city depends on tax revenue from the state. And the decline in that revenue, in that shared revenue, has been dramatic. And uh, provision of basic services, are, uh, that is shifting to uh, individual taxpayers and renters uh, in the city. It's not a good situation. It should change. But in the meantime, I think it is important for us to the small extent that we can make very small increases in our tax levy, to the extent that it's economically reasonable uh, and responsible, we need to do that because we need to be able to protect our financial positioning uh, as we go forward. So, um, for example, as, as the mayor pointed out in his memo, we made, I think, the, the, the good decision to do away with special assessments but that doesn't mean that suddenly we don't need that money. And so we're constantly, I think, looking at the most efficient way to do, uh, to do business in a, re <laughs> in a really challenging environment. And so like Alder Bohr and I, I applaud uh, uh, the department heads and the city administrator and all the folks who were involved in putting this budget together for really limiting it to a, a small increase and um, but I, you know, I've been knocking on doors a lot lately, and there are a lot of houses in our area, in our city, uh, you know, where you can just tell that people are having hard financial times. 50, almost 50 percent of our students in the Sheboygan Area School District are eligible for free or reduced lunch. So our overall federal poverty rate might be quite low, but the actual poverty rate and, and the challenges that people have you know, they're pretty intense. So I think we've done a good job here to, to minimize the pain. And uh, we just need to, I think, as alders, continue to advocate for a smarter way of doing business with our, our big partner, the state. Thank you for those comments. Any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflesh? Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes.
Item 7.4 is RC number 160 of 1819 by the committee. The whole to whom was referred RC number 140 of 1819 by the licensing hearings and public safety committee and a copy of resolution number 94 of 1819 by Alder Persons Reinfleisch and Born establishing the 2019 budget appropriations and the 2018 tax levy for use during the calendar year and recommends accepting and filing the documents. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that we accept and file the document. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in, please call the roll. Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to other matters received after the agenda was published. I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a summons and complaint in the matter of TCF National Bank versus Brett J. Lettenberger et al. That'll be referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. 8.2 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2018, June 30, 2019, and June 30, 2020. That'll re be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. 8.3 is a resolution by all the persons Renfleisch and Boren authorizing the appropriate city official to enter into an intergovernmental cooperative agreement with Sheboygan County for sales tax revenue sharing for transportation infrastructure maintenance. That will be referred to, the referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, next we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. I move to uh, move into uh, uh, to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 1985 sub 1 sub e with stats where competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session related to development opportunities at the former Vanderbart property and Piggly Wiggly Midwest possible purchase of public property known as the various parcel numbers that are on the screen. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Would the clerk please call the roll for a closed session? Truster? Aye. Donahue? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Rinflesh? Aye. Decker? Aye. Phillips? Aye. Sorensen? Aye. Mitchell? Aye. All ayes. Motion passes. This will end our televised broadcast. The council will be planning to adjourn in closed session. We'll take a five minute recess and reconvene shortly.